If you have a Dillon XL750 or an XL650 and you upgraded your shell plate with one of these bearing assemblies and now you can't get good case ejection and your cases are binding up when they go to eject off the shell plate, check out this video because I have a part that might be helpful to you. Welcome back guys, bit of a tech tip video for you guys today on the Dillon XL750 and uh, we're going to show you basically what the issue that I came across was and how we are going to solve it. So without any further ado, let's jump on into it, flip you guys around and show you up close. Now the origin of this issue occurred primarily when I decided to add in this entirely crimson shell plate bearing down here which is supposed to make your shell plate spin nice and smooth, which as you can see here it does. However, what this also does, and hopefully you guys are able to see this, is it bumps your ejector wire from being tight against the shell plate to actually being raised to the point where I can almost get a fingertip under it. And if I wanted to, let me grab this here. This is a like extra large bladed flat screwdriver. I can get that entirely under that wire and that is basically as low as it will go. The main issue occurs on the last stage when the ejector wire is getting ready to push the completed cartridge out of the shell plate. Now I'm going to simulate this here with my hand, but as the shell plate comes around, the first thing it wants to do, and this is freshly lubed so it's not wanting to do it now, the first thing it's going to want to do is actually tip that case over instead of kicking it out. saw there a little bit of jamming this is freshly oiled so it's not doing it as bad now this is due primarily because the ejector wire sits up higher it's basically just trying to tip that case over instead of just guide it out of the shell plate now one of the fixes for that is this 3d printable aftermarket shell ejector extension now i will throw basically a screenshot up here of the gentleman who came up with this. I believe I downloaded this off of printables. And this simply slides right down over the top of the bolt here. And this one printed really nice. It's actually a friction frit. And you'll see if I raise the ram, that actually presses it down onto the bolt. And with that in place, They eject quite nicely. However, the tolerances on this combined with the tolerances of the bearing set, every time I raise the ram, this is actually pressing against the tool head, which is in turn pushing down on the bearings on the shell plate. And when I go to lower the handle, you can see here that is still raised. This should have gone down and easily turned, but it's actually taking a decent bit of force to get that to turn. And if I try to turn it by hand, that actually takes a good bit of force. So we know this is exhibiting pressure down on the shell plate, which is a no-go. So I did a simple redesign of this one, printed it up, and let's get it installed. Got you guys here with a little bit of a break from the editing bench. Um, I did end up actually coming up with two separate designs. If you guys are short on time, I want to skip to that. Uh, Timestamps in the description down below. You can see either the first revision or the second one that I came up with. The second one is the one that I think is better and the one that I intend to use. But if you want to see the whole design process, feel free to keep watching. If you want to hurry up and skip to the final one, check out the description down below for those timestamps. And as you can see here, here is my edited version fresh off the press. I did thin down the height on the top a little bit so it's not bumping up against the top of the uh, tool head. And I extended this bottom edge down further to just accommodate the existing wire and to bring it more close down to the shell plate. Let's get this guy installed. And the nice thing of this design, hopefully you guys are able to see this, is it does not require that bolt in the back. This actually is, one, it's a pretty good press fit. Two, it actually just presses up against the existing ejector wire uh, to keep this from rotating, which is a really nice feature. So we're just going to set that on, cam it against the wire. There we go. There we are officially flat. Now I'm going to raise the ram. Actually, I'm going to 
taking a few guys off the tripod. Nice arm, and there you can see as that comes up, it helps to start seating it down onto that, and you can see there basically how it fits in. Shell plate's turning nice and easy. And you can see there, we do have a little bit more room to come down. So I'm gonna put you guys back on the tripod. And now we're gonna be smart about this. I have a set of feeler gauges. Actually, that ought to be perfect. And I'm gonna use this. Right up against here. to seat it the remainder of the way. Nice Harbor Freight feeler gauge set, but at least according to my calipers, they are pretty accurate. Now, you can turn that fairly easily. And actually it's not quite as easy as I want it to be, so we can just come in here ever so gently with a screwdriver. Just lift up a tiny bit. And we do have the advantage here that this will not be pressing on the top of the tool head every time. So it's going to stay nice and loose. We are over against that, perfect. And there we go. Now if I stick a complete cartridge in here, and let's push on this one just to, there we go. They're not binding up anymore. And that is exactly what we want that ejector to do. So shortly after filming that clip that you guys just saw, I was getting ready to turn in for the evening and I had an idea. So the one issue with putting on, you guys should be able to see this, this particular design right here. So when you go and you set it on, you line it up, but there's only the one tab right here. And what that does is it keeps this from rotating clockwise with the shell plate, which is good. But there's nothing that keeps it lined up going the opposite direction. So if you're, well, we can fix that. And then thinking of the other problem is when you actually press this one down. So uh, let me see here. So let's just say this is standing in in place of the shell plate bolt. So when you press this one down and you actually press it onto the shell plate bolt, you are also pressing down onto the top of the bearing stack. And that initially makes it tight. And then you have to come back in there with a screwdriver, basically lift up a little bit under all the edges, and then it loosens up and it spins and it works. However, I thought we can make that into one design. So I hopped in SolidWorks. And as you can see here, just added on that base, radiused off the edges, and of course, put in the uh, outer cuts, as you can see here, basically to let the screwdriver get in, and added in the support for both sides of the ejector wire. But this was the final result. So as you can see, let me flip you guys around here so you can see a little better. So as you can see, we went from something of this design. You can see here it is single thickness with the exception of the little portion of the ejector to something that looks like this. There we go. So the top portion is largely the same. If you take a look here, those look similar. However, it has this bottom section added to it, which drops it down further. And this is actually designed when you tighten it down, this edge here presses against the shell plate. Now the whole idea on that is you're not pressing down on your center bolt to basically take up the last of that slot when you're tightening it. So that it never gets tight and binds to the shell plate. It always has this basically creating a standoff which is basically perfect. Now, in addition to this, I figured because this one used to actually sit, and I'll throw in a screenshot here. This used to sit elevated. If you want to take this off, you could easily get a screwdriver under here and just lift. Well, with this one going down completely flush against the shell plate, you can't do that. So I put in scallop cuts on this side, which you can access from the right side of the machine. And this one, which you can access from the left because it basically sits in this orientation and they kick out over on the side, they feed in from right here and that allows you to take it on and off freely. Now, the other thing I also wanted is, when in use, this can't rotate clockwise because, of course, this tab here, same as on 
this design like this. However, we changed it so that now your ejector wire actually goes right through this slot, and now it can no longer spin in the opposite direction either. Let me show you installing it over here on the press. Now, because I built some redundancies into this one, installation is even easier than the last model. To install it, we just simply just take it, as you can see here, let me make sure we're focused. We just take it and we're gonna line up this slot here with your ejector wire, like so. And you're just gonna pivot the rest of it down over top. This one is designed, let me zoom in here. This one is designed to go over the thrust bearing and the ejector wire and the bolt. Now let's get that installed. So simply we're just going to line that side up right there. You can see here it can't rotate now left or right and I'm just going to basically make sure it's kind of sitting in position. That wire is splitting that gap right there. Push down a little bit and now we're just going to raise the ram. Now this will start it. You can see here, it began to push it down a little bit. However, and also note our shell plate spins nice and easy, we're not down quite all the way. Now what I did for this one is I took my set of fuel gauges and I just go for the ends that has the, uh, the thicker ones. So I know I'm definitely not going to hurt them. Whatever thickness you use doesn't really matter here. You're just using it as a uh, spacer. And I'm just going to bring it in. A little bit. I'm just going to bring them in here from the back side, as you can see. Now I'm going to raise the ram again. I'm just on top of the printed part right here, and all I'm going to do is push gently. Right there, it's bottomed out on the shell plate, so I know it's seated down all the way. Now from this point, you may have a little bit of a friction lock. It will spin, but if you want to release that friction lock just a little bit. These slots are designed to fit a screwdriver right in here. Take one of these in from the side, lift up ever so gently. There's one. There's two. And if you really want, you don't have to do this, but you can come over on this side, like right in here. Just lift up a little bit. And there we go. Spinning nice and easily, exactly as it's supposed to. But enough of me talking. How well does it eject? I'm going to just take out that last station retaining button there. Zoom in a touch more, refocus for you guys. And let's eject some cases. I'm going to try to get this one stuck, and I couldn't even get it stuck. So this design here works pretty well. As you can see, I'm looking forward to testing it. I will put these files up on Thingiverse. Again, link down in the description down below, and uh, print details there if you guys would like to print one for yourselves. If you have a 3D printer and you don't mind doing a little bit of tinkering to get this to work, the quality is excellent. I printed this one out of PETG, so it's going to be chemical resistant and the tolerance and everything on this is quite excellent. Well, this goes to show that just because you have one good idea, like this one right here, doesn't mean you can't improve on it and further refine the process. That's what it's all about, learning, growing, and improving everything in the day-to-day. -day. Stay safe out there, you guys. Keep on reloading. And if you need to print one of these for your own XL750, check out the link in the description down below. Thanks, catch you later.